Okay, thanks, Drew. Uh, so yeah, we're going to talk about how to use ADX and MACD together. Now, um, I do uh, basically consult with institutional money managers, professional money managers, uh, mutual funds, hedge funds, stuff like that. And I've been doing that for about almost 35 years. So a lot of what I do and a few of the slides will either be will even be a little bit longer term chart, maybe like a weekly or something like that. But um, I have traded extensively interday and the the uh, stuff that I'm going to show you today can definitely be applied to sm uh, smaller time frames. I'm going to show you the combinations I like, and there will be several examples of interday. So just so you're aware. Um, and as we get going, obviously, uh, this is for educational purposes, uh, just a standard disclaimer here. All right. So let's uh, let's just get in a little bit about me. Um, I started hand charting using point and figure charts back in 1988. That really kind of got me going and loved uh, um, technical analysis from from the get go. Um, in in a in about a year and a half after that, I start I started with a new firm that I was and I was consulting with money managers at that point. We had cutting edge technology that provided uh, a, a, it would be a software that would sit on someone's desk, but it had the best. And it was really the first filtering program for technical analysis. So that's kind of where I got my start. And in order to get uh, money managers to buy the uh, software, we would go in, you know, and do a conference, and sit in front of, you know, 10 guys and basically start talking about stocks in the market. And that's, it was, it was really had to know what was going on, had to, had to be able to uh, give them input on individual ideas and from there, it kind of just grew. Um, so I'm going to get into a lot of the techniques that I have kind of worked on since 1990, um, and it, it, they've continued to grow. But I'm going to focus mostly on uh, MACD and ADX today because um, I think they can really add a lot of value for you. All right. So uh, I do have a book and a Momentum Courses, and, uh, and those are really devoted to helping people trade in multiple time frames. Um, and then from 19, before I started my firm in 2005, I did manage a co-manage a hedge fund for about six years. Um, and so I, I want to make sure you understand I'm not just standing on the sidelines giving guys advice. I, I've traded for a very, very long time. Um, and uh, so I've seen, you know, and I made a lot of mistakes early on. So uh, I think I, I, it makes it easy for me to teach because uh, <laughs> I've, I've made all those mistakes. I know what it's like to, uh, you know, to take information and kind of twist it based on how you're feeling that day. So uh, anyway, so anyway, I want to move on here. I do have a, a, a show on stock charts TV. It's on the YouTube channel there called uh, stock talk. So uh, at the beginning of each one of those shows, I do a lesson, and a lot of those lessons are devoted to ADX and MACD. So you could go back through those if you have an interest, if you like what you're hearing today. All right, so I I have a number of factors in the decision-making process. I call it kind of my way to the evidence, right? But I'm going to focus, uh, again, really on MACD and ADX today, all right? Um, now, one thing I will say about MACD and ADX is that I use them as a supplemental tool to price. All right. I don't, I typically take triggers off of price. I don't take triggers off of MACD or ADX. Um, so I want to use them as a supporting tool. Some of the things about these indicators that I think have big advantages is that they can anticipate the next swing, at least for the way I use it. So I know there's a lagging effect when you're using an indicator, but the way I'm using it, it, there's a leading component to it. I can see what just happened in the last leg, and I can, and it can tell me a lot about what's going to happen in the next leg. All right, um, and so I focus mostly on MACD for timing. It helps a lot with the timing. I've got about four or five patterns I'm constantly looking for um, in all time frames. And then um, ADX, I think, is an incredibly powerful tool for uh, showing you when you have a very strong trend in place, all right? And then the opposite is also true when you don't have a trend in place. When there's a low ADX condition in place, 
it's telling you in a lot of cases, it's telling you that it's getting ready. It's like building energy for a new move. But what if you're a day trader, you don't really want to get caught up in that. So ADX can be incredibly helpful at avoiding chop that can take place in a day. And I'm going to show you how you could go about using it for that. Um, so I do think these are really uh, easy tools for screening, whereas price, I don't find it as helpful from a from a screening standpoint but i can you know i can go and say give me adx strong or sort by adx um i can say give me macd near the zero line and uh either above or below doesn't really matter i know i'm in the area where it could be an interesting um trading spot um so i like to use those for screens and i've done it on interday on an interday basis too it works very well um if you have the program that can do it okay so I want to make sure we're all starting on the same page because when you think about it, it you, I'm sure you hear a lot of um, people say uh, you really don't want to have too many indicators. You don't want to use more than one indicator and all that. And I, so I, I use ADX for one thing and MACD for another, but there's, there's something really important you need to understand about the two. All right. So ADX is using, it doesn't use the close at all in its calculation. It's only using the high low range. So I'm looking at DI plus DI is basically the strength of the buyers. That's this green line down here. And that's essentially showing when, so this is one bar. All right. Again, this can be on any time frame. I'm showing you on a monthly chart. It could be a one minute. If the distance between this high and this high is showing positive DI. That's what we're looking for. From here to here is positive DI. So you can see that, and the green line will be uh, moving up when there's positive DI in place, all right? Then um, the negative DI here is where we're showing um, from low to low, price expansion from low to low. So this is negative DI, this distance here. All right. And this is additional negative DI here. You can see that's why this was popping up during this pullback. All right. Now, the blue line is the ADX. It's the difference between the green line and the red line. All right. If the green line is going up and the red line is going down, then this blue line is going to go up. The same thing holds true if the red line is going up and the green line is going down, meaning the sellers are really strong and the buyers are very weak, then the blue line is going to go up. It's non direct. It doesn't care. I already know these things, but I thought it would just be good to just kind of crawl at the beginning, make sure we're all on the same page. We're looking at the buyers, the strength and or weakness of the buyers in green, the strength and or weakness of the sellers in red, and then the difference between the two, or basically the trend, the strength of the trend is in blue. All right. Now, the 25 line I have going across all, all my uh, charts, and if it's above the 25 level, we've essentially reached um, a level where you can you can think that the the uh, whatever market you're watching in that time frame is is reached a point where it's strong enough to trend. Anything below that is a non-trending period. All right. The other thing I would suggest that you look at is if the blue line is waving up and down like this, um, in on either way uh, above or below, then we know we have a lot of volatility in the trend. And when there's a lot of volatility in a trend, you want to be quicker to take profits as opposed to try and trailing a stop and milk it for a big move. All right. And again, this can happen on a one or a two minute chart. So that's why I'm bringing all this up. All right. So MACD, on the other hand, doesn't care about the high low at all. It only cares about the, the close. So we've got two different indicators essentially using completely different factors. All right. And so I have found when the volatility is incredibly high, when we have a lot of volatility, especially at a low, if you get a big drop in the market, like in 2020, market makes a big move to the downside, the ADX is going to have a massive amount of lag to it when there's big volatility. And I'm going to lean on other things. I'm going to focus a little bit more on the price action and the moving averages at that point. I'll lean a little bit on MACD. It will be quicker than ADX, but both are probably going to lag price when the volatility is very, very hot. So you just want to understand that. You got to understand how this is calculated so that you can understand where there are some weaknesses to it. And 
there are times where I'll ignore ADX completely. Um, it's pretty rare for me to ignore the DI lines when I'm trading. If I'm a trader, the DI lines are going to factor in um, pretty consistently. There are times where ADX has just got too much lag to it where I don't need to necessarily watch it closely, especially if I'm just playing for a singular, single, single leg like that. Okay, so let's get into a little bit more about the details. So for, for MACD, I have followed Gerald Appel's work. I read his original manuscript, and I call it a manuscript. It was around 30 or 40 pages. He was the creator of MACD. I, do not, I did not change it. Uh, there was a time there where I tried to kind of shift some things around and use a shorter term version for when it was going down and a you know, longer term version going up. And, I, and what, I, what I came down to is that using MACD with its standard 12, 26, 9 settings works great. You just, I think you have to use it in multiple time frames. So I'm going to show you how I would go about doing that, how it can be used in multiple time frames. And uh, I think uh, I think it'll satisfy your needs to get in quicker um, by understanding the different signals that it can show. All right. Now, um, let me just show you a few things that, about MACD and um, where I think it can be advantageous and where I really zone in on it. Um, so. Right now, I'm just showing 18. So I use an 18 MA this magenta colored and a 40 MA. Those are the two. Um, now, if you want to use a 20 and a 40, there's no problem. I did that for a long time. No problem using those. I like the 18 because the slope shifts a little bit quicker. And the slope of this moving average, this shorter term moving average is very important to me. So just because I get a lot of questions about this, that's why I'm going to explain it. So the 18 that tends to shift a little bit quicker and I want to see that shift a little bit quicker than the 20. So that's the reason why I use it. But I like to use these two as a buddy system where these two lines, when they're rising up at around the same time, we've got a pretty strong trend in place. If they're moving down at about the same rate, we've got a pretty strong downtrend in place. But if you notice here, we get a downside cross. Now a downside cross is supposed to be negative. Okay. That's that's something we should be looking for if we're, you know, if we're doing a te standard technical analysis is the short-term time frame breaking down through the longer term one. However, for me, what I do is I got to look at the bigger picture pattern because this is actually what I call an opposing trend pattern. Um, but if you go down and you look at MACD, you can see what's happened. We were overbought at the beginning of 2010. We worked our way down and MACD was extended above the zero line and then it worked its way back down to the zero line. The zero line is incredibly important to my work uh, in MACD. I'm looking for trades at or near the zero line as much as possible in either direction. We could either cross to the downside and I'm looking for the first signal, or we could cross to the upside, or we could do this. We could come down towards it and do a, a, a zero line reversal. So something we want to be on the lookout for. But right now, price is showing. I mean, if I do a, draw a trend line here, you know, all of a sudden people are getting bearish with this because it looks like this trend is breaking to the downside. MACD is telling us we're coming back to neutral position and what I would consider to be a uh, support. Now, if I go to the next slide, I've got the zero line kind of highlighted now with the red line. And you can just see all the areas where we want to be ready if we're at or near the zero line, right? But if I'm looking at something coming down, I, I want to look at this and see if it's holding the zero line or if it's breaking the zero line. If we keep going, look at this. So uh, now, I've got a weekly chart up. Again, I'm going to show you some really short-term time frames in a minute. But this is just a great example of a stock that moved up and then pulled back. Looked like it was reversing back down on the weekly chart. But the MACD was essentially coming back down to the zero line. And, the, and we were coming back to the higher time frame 18. This is incredibly important. Once you know how to use multiple time frames, you can realize that this is actually something we, we need to be ready for a new move to the upside. So we key in on how MACD acts around the zero line for that. I'm going to show you a lot more examples of this as we move on. Um, the green line is the, is, is in this picture, is the 18 month line. It's the higher time frame 18. So if this is the 18 on the standard time frame I'm looking at, which in this case is a weekly, this is the 18 month line. 
and it acts as trend support. If it's rising, we want to buy into the weakness. Okay. So, but notice what happens here. We get this repeating pattern where we've got this 18 month showing the trend to the upside. Now, again, this could be like a 10 minute chart here, and this could be a two minute. I'm going to show you some examples of that in a minute. Um, but we're looking for reversals in this area because we're holding trend support and MACD is holding at the zero line over and over and over again. All right. Now, what we can do with this is that it can really help us define kind of our trading strategy. We can look for zero line reversals at the higher time frame support. And then as we get divergence, as we're stretched away from that higher time frame support, we can look to either short or exit our our longs. Um, I use simple MAs, SMAs, 1840 simple um, is what I'm using. And, and then you can see that we come down again, we get another setup near the zero line here, and then we get a move to the upside. Again, divergence shows up. We can play that to the downside, working our way back to trend support again, and then look for another entry turning back up again. So this pattern can happen over and over and over again. Um, I'm going to move through this, and I, I've got a lot of examples that I want to show you, but I want to go through. This is kind of like the crawl phase. I want to make sure you guys are, everybody's up to speed on what I'm looking at. All right, I want to look at a few things about ADX. So if ADX stays low for an extended period, all right, below the 25 level for a long time, and price forms either a rectangular pattern or, in this case, like an ascending triangle, we want to draw trend lines on price and wait for a breakout or breakdown. But in this case, it, it, it's a breakout. Now, what I do is I look at the MACD to help me determine whether the odds are it's gonna break to the upside or to the downside. Again, I'll show you that as we move forward into some real-time examples here. Um, so we wanna look for periods and we kinda of wanna avoid periods. If we're trading for trend, we don't really wanna trade when this is low like this for an extended period, unless we're gonna so the only way I'd want to trade this, so if, let's say this is happening on, say, like a five-minute chart or something like that, then I want to buy at trend support and sell at resistance. I don't really want to trade for a breakout or breakdown until it happens, if we have a low ADX condition in place. Once we get strong ADX, like we do here, based on the buyers, the green breaks out and the blue line makes a big move, then we look to play pullbacks in the trend after we show strength in the ADX. So those are the two ways we really want to play ADX is one is if there's no trend in place, we have a low ADX in place for a long period. We kind of want to avoid trading and or just take really quick trades at support and resistance. And that's about it. So this is one way you really can avoid chop because if you're below 25, again, let's say this is happening on a five minute chart and you're trying to trade for a move. Well, there's no real move coming. That's actually happened today on the S&P. I'll show you that in a second. So we don't want to get too uh, hyperactive trading when there's not a lot of movement in the trend. Uh, actually, no, that's a good question. I was going to bring that up. So I I use, a th uh, so the standard uh, ADX uh, settings are 1414, all right? Now, I, I, there were three influences I had. Charles LeBeau was an influence in ADX. Ch Linda Rasky, Rasky was a, a big influence on me in ADX. And Charles um, Schapp wrote a book called AD Excellence. That was also a nice influence on me. And he uses a eight ADX. So he uses 13 and eight. All right. I do like it. All right. Now, if you put up a 14, 14 and a... 13.8, it's not that different. I mean, you can pretty much use the 14.14 if you really wanted to, but I'm telling you, I have really grown to love the eight on the smoothing, the ADX portion, which is this blue line. And the reason is, is that it gives me quicker peaks and valleys. So you can see how this made this move here, and we're showing pretty significant divergence in that move. Whereas if we're on a 14, it might just show something like that. It might not have two separate peaks. So just something you want to be on the lookout for. It might be worth, if, you, if you've used 14.14 for a long time, my suggestion is to put up 14.14 and then right below it do the 13.8 and just get a feel for the differences. And I think after you go through, if, we, if you listen to what I'm showing you today, I think you'll understand why I like the eight so much. 
It really helps us compare prior peaks and prior valleys, and it's uh, pretty crucial to uh, my approach. Now, here's another way I use ADX, and I've used this on uh, one and two minute charts. I found it to be incredibly valuable uh, when, when I'm in a position, I'm looking for an exit point that could be pretty important. Or if I'm watching a market to move to the upside and I'm looking for a reversal of the trend. If you notice, this is a weekly chart in 2021. And what this is showing is the price is moving up, no problem, all the way through the end of the year. But look at what the ADX did. First, it showed nice strength based on the buyers. These are all good Buy, good strength based on buying pressure because the green line's causing causing the blue line to go up above 25. But if you notice, starting right about here, it was right around August, September, we went to a new high in price and ADX could not get above 25, okay? That being the case, I am now on the lookout for some kind of a reversal. Now, I'm not jumping the gun or doing anything like that. I'm not shorting or anything. I'm, I'm watching price to give me a sign that things are shifting. But uh, and what I'm actually going to do is go down, if this is a weekly chart, I'm probably going to go down to a daily chart and look for a signal to the downside. Again, I'm going to show you this just happened, this specific pattern just happened in uh, the S&P on a daily chart just in the last uh, few weeks. In fact, I think that's the next slide. Yeah, so this is the next slide. All right, so here's this year. This is 2024. We've got ADX. Look at the power of this move into the end of the year. This is, again, on a daily chart. Look at the strength of the ADX based on the buyers. You see how strong the buyers are causing this, this blue line to go all the way up to 60. I mean, that's a huge reading for that. We want to be looking to play pullbacks in the trend when the ADX is strong and above 25 like that. But if you notice what happened here right around the end of March, it stopped staying above 25. It sort of died out. It's almost like it just kept, it was bouncing and showing a lot of strength. And then it, it, it was still okay here, like good enough. It was weaker. It wasn't as weak as, as strong as this, but it was clearly starting to lose some strength. And then when it started to fail to get above 25, we knew we should be on the lookout for some kind of a reversal. We had some distribution days as well. Look at the uh, distribution days that were starting to show up based on the volume pattern right now. Um, so we want to be on the lookout for other things, but that was a pretty key thing showing me that. So that to me is a lot more important than any kind of a, a MACD divergence. When, when ADX does this type of divergence, we need to be on the lookout for a reversal. All right. When MACD is diverging, I'm just looking for a pullback. I'm not necessarily looking for a reversal. All right. So this is a really key, important thing to be on the lookout for. If you're looking for a reversal pattern, we want to look for this exhaustion signal in ADX. All right, let's uh, move ahead. All right, now let's go in to start looking at multiple time frames. Um, okay, I actually want to make sure I'm uh, on your chart. Green line is 18 month. Is that 18? It's 72 weeks. I use 72 weeks. Now, I have some programs that actually will plot the 18-month. Uh, but yeah, that green line I was using in the example earlier on was just a 72-week overlaid onto the weekly chart. Sorry, Charles, I didn't see your uh, earlier question. So yeah, so that's just a 72. If Some programs don't allow you to do that. Others will actually let you plot a different time frame moving average onto a, a moving at, on on that time frame so like uh, if you're on trading view or uh, think or swim or something like that you can use a one minute chart and put a five minute 18 overlaid onto that all right very powerful um, i like to use that now let's just look at this xle we get this move and you can see the clear shift in trend on the five so this is a five minute chart here and a one minute on the left all right so we get this move to the upside Look at the ADX strength associated with this move. Now, look at the red DI. Red DI is up here. It's it's up. It's starting to lose strength because on the way down and hitting new lows, you see how ADX can't get above 25. But now, and then we do it again. Look at how weak these negative DI moves. This was pretty strong, but then after that, they really weakened. So we wanted to be on the lookout for a reversal. Well, we got one, really strong one. We break the downtrend line, and then we pull back and find support at the two moving averages, which are starting to crisscross. Now, while that is taking place, this is where that is happening on this time frame. So what I do is 
because I'm a big fan of low risk. All right. I like to, I like to improve my time. This is the reason why I use two time frames. There's two reasons. One is I want to have smaller risk. And the second reason is I want to know, I want to improve my timing. I want to know when this time frame is getting back in line with this time frame. I know this time frame is shifting to the upside and now pulling back. I want to use this time frame to tell me when it's time that we're getting ready to go. What I noticed about myself as a trader is that I don't necessarily trade all that well when I'm in something at a loss. All right. If I can get in something and improve my timing and get a nice green bar in my favor on a long, have it break out or move in my favor, all of a sudden I turn into a pretty disciplined trader. But when I'm sitting around at a loss at the beginning of a trade, I, you know, and I, I mean, it's it's granted, I think it's it's warranted that you should be concerned. But it, it, sometimes you, not, you need to have the discipline to live through that. For me, I like using these two time frames because I can sort of define, okay, this is forming. Uh, so first of all, let me show you. So strength to the upside. And then we go through this kind of ABC corrective pattern. It's more of a sideways pattern, but it is an ABC. Look at how the ADX and the green stayed pretty much in control, right? We had a lot of strength of the ADX to the upside based on the buyers. And then on the declining phase, red could not get above 25. So the sellers were never very strong during the decline phase. This is key because during this correction, we couldn't even get the ADX above 25. So that means there's really no strength in the sellers. We couldn't get the sellers going. And if that's the case, I want to have, I want to be on the lookout for a reversal signal to the upside. Now I, I use MACD for the timing. We probably end up getting like a, a, a zero line reversal uh, that would show up here. I wanted to kind of focus in on ADX on this screen, on this particular uh, screen here, but the, the MACD would help in the timing. In a lot of cases, I'm using a trend line break as an entry signal. All right, let's move on. I'm going to, again, show you another example of ADX where here's the 10-minute uh, chart. We get a big gap up, and then it consolidates back. But look at the strength of the buyers. I mean, it's crystal clear. This thing reached up to, what, 50 or something. Anytime you're over 50, you're in a pretty strong trend. Um, and we want to be on the lookout for pullbacks in that situation. Linda Rashke refers to this as the Holy Grail, right? She called it the Holy Grail in her book. Um, I, I mean, obviously her, uh, she uses a 1414, so it's a little bit different, but the idea is the same. We're looking to buy pullbacks after there's a lot of strength in the ADX. Well, what I like to do is while we're forming this pullback, we're getting this sort of consolidation pattern I'm actually looking for an opposing trend to take place on this time frame. So this time frame's up. And then I'm looking for the 18 to actually cross down through the 40, go in the opposite direction. And we get we can form a trend line in this case. And notice the difference, strong ADX based on the buyers on the way up. And then look at during the correction phase, zero strength in the sellers. The sellers did get above 25, but look at how low the ADX is based on the selling strength. So in this case, I'm looking at this saying the, the, there's probably going to be upside continuation. Now, it didn't at last very long. But if you're a good trader and I can use this time frame two minute instead of a 10 minute and I can get in with pretty small risk, I can make pretty decent money just getting back to the old high. All right. So we want to focus in on two things. On the high time frame, we want to make sure there's confirmation of strength to the upside. And then on the lower time frame during the decline phase, we want to make sure there's confirmation that there's not a lot of strength in the sellers. Now, I'm using long examples. I'm going to show you. I think I have a few short examples uh, that we can go through as well. Uh, let's move on. Um, so let's use an example that focuses a little bit more on MACD. Now, I am looking at ADX as well to support what I'm looking at. But look at this. So this is a hourly chart in a 10-minute and then a, uh, a two-minute here. All right. And so... What we can do is we can see this move to the downside. This was a big gap, but look at it, it was kind of like an extended, almost an exhaustion gap after a big move to the upside. We get a move to the downside, and then we almost form like a bear flag here. We get a strong move to the downside and then a little bear flag. Notice how the MACD has crossed over, and then during this bear flag-ish type of a pattern, we stay below the signal line. The other thing that's important about this is we have a lot of room down to zero. So we're stretched away from the zero line. And then we have a crossover signal 
And I, I refer to this as a pinch play because it, it the MACD line itself is sort of pinching into the signal line while price is giving a little minor rally, all right? In that case, if there's room to the zero line, I could be looking for a trade to the downside. Uh, I think so. You're going to have to ask Drew. I think this is going to be on, uh, on YouTube. Okay. Now, um, while this rally is taking place on this time frame, look at what's happening here. We're getting our opposing trend. The 18 crosses back below, uh, above the eight, uh, 40, and the MACD on this time frame rallies up to the zero line. You see what I mean? So we're now we're back to the zero line here, and we're failing here. I've got a pretty nice combination in place. Then I can be pretty aggressive at that peak as it's rallying up, and I can see we actually had divergence at the high. We had ADX not confirming at the peak. Or we could just play our standard, look for the break of the trend line and play the lower high, which is kind of like my favorite signal um, when I'm playing a micro time frame with the trend or, a, you know, a, this is sort of a counter trend play because the, the hourly is actually in an uptrend, but we're, we're reverting back to the mean. Um, we can use this two minute chart to get us in with really small risk. Um, MACD pinch play happens right as this is rallying up. So these are the kind of combinations I'm looking for as I'm going through and looking at these timeframes in her day. All right, and just another example, here's the cues. Um, so we get a uh, pullback to an 18 on the 10 minute was declining and now it's finding support around the 18. And while that's taking place, we get a one, two, three reversal. We break the trend line here and then we come back and test. And then we get a nice big green bar converting that to showing that we're showing really good support off of this low after breaking the trend line into trend support on the higher time frame with MACD holding its signal line. And keep in mind, this signal line is now rising. This is almost like looking at the trend of the momentum. When that's rising, we have bullish momentum um, on that time frames, uh, uh, MACD and momentum. All right. Just like when this turned down here, the momentum is shifting back to the downside. We want to use rallies against it. We want to look for these pinch plays, all right? This is one of my four patterns that I talk about in my course. Um, so the other thing I'd point out is that this is a high volatility. You see how this is just waving back and forth here? All right, we don't want to be too, I mean, we're not looking to for a big reversal and a big move and try and make a killing. We want to get in and get out. We're going to use tighter risk in this situation because the, the volatility on the ADX is telling us we don't have a big strong trend in place. And we uh, also have a lot of volatility. All right. Um, here's an example from, uh, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, I believe it was yesterday. So we we gapped up yesterday. And, and I'll show you how this was basically just rallying into resistance on the high time frame. So if you're looking at this like on, on a 60 minute chart, it was rallying into resistance, into the, into the bigger time frame resistance, uh, trend resistance. But it just basically caved in and then broke and then got this rally underneath last uh, the prior day's low, right? So this is the these are the lows from the prior day. We broke that rally back up. But look at this opposing trend pattern. Look at the zero line reversal. Look at the lack of strength in the buyers after huge strength in the sellers. You guys see this? Hey, can everybody just give me a quick? Uh, yeah, you get it. You see the difference between the strength. So this is strength here to the downside. And then we're looking, so this is the high time frame. Here's the low time frame. We want to measure the strength here. There's no strength, nobody home. Okay, good to hear. Um, so this is the two, this is the combination we want to look for. And I'm like, I don't day trade as much as I used to. I coach guys that day trade. Um, I, I tend to focus on a little bit longer term now. I mean, I did this for years and years. Um, I don't, I don't really, I like to play golf too much. I don't really like to sit around and watch these things trade all day anymore, but I will tell you that these patterns are happening just on a regular basis, nonstop. All right. They, they happen all the time. I'll give you, uh, now one other thing I did want to point out as an exit strategy, this is something I used to use on one minute trades. All right. One minute. I'm showing you on, uh, this is actually a one minute, but so this is the, this is the entry that I was just showing on the QQQ from yesterday. So you're long off the big red bar potentially, or maybe off this trend line break, something like that. But here's the point I want to make. Now, 
what I do when I want to play this move to the downside and I, and I, and I'm playing off of one minute, I, I don't want to, I don't want to marry this thing. I'm looking to get in and get out as soon as the momentum starts to die out. Well, I'm using red DI for this. We want to watch on the decline. So we get a move to the downside here without any swings, right? This is just basically straight down, but, but DI is confirming the move, right? It keeps going to new highs. Red DI is showing the sellers are strong. Then we get a rally and we turn down. Once we do that, I'm probably going to move my stop here. Up until that point, I'm kind of giving it room because this trend is so strong because the DI is confirming. Now, if you notice what happened, we rallied up and we went to a new low here and we've got divergence in DI, red DI. The sellers have weakened dramatically. So at that point, I'm actually going to tighten the stop a lot. I'm going to come right above the, maybe the two bar high or the one bar high. And I'm looking to get stopped out as soon as this divergence starts to show up. So, uh, you know, that would be the exit point of a trade like this where we're, we're loose. And then if we get a reversal using a swing, we come down and make it a little tighter. But then if we go to a new low and DI is not confirming, I want to get really tight. I'm going to probably get exiting within the next few minutes. So it's a great tool. It works in both directions to the upside or the downside. Obviously, I think it works uh, most, a lot of these indicators uh, will work really, really well in a decline like this. And, and if you notice, it wasn't the low of the move, right? I mean, it did go to another new low, but that was the lion's share. And that's really what you're looking for, I think, when you're trading. Okay, so I'm going back to a weekly chart just to show what we're trying to identify is we've got trend analysis we're doing in price using the moving averages, using the price pattern and the swings. But we're also identifying, yeah, there's divergence here, but now it's also really important divergence because ADX can't get above 25 if this is moving up. This is giving you an early warning sign of a re potential reversal developing, all right? We want to be on the lookout for that. When I see a, DI, a, a MACD divergence, I'm thinking pullback. When I'm seeing this type of divergence where you can't get above 25, I'm thinking reversal. And a reversal to me means the 18 is going to come down below the 40, meaning we're going to get a big enough reversal that this time frame is going to reverse to a downtrend. So we did that, but then look at what happens. We do the exact opposite. Let me go to the next slide. So the next slide, now we've got the exact opposite. And I can tell you, I've done this numerous times on one and two minute charts. The same pattern will repeat over and over and over again if you're on the lookout for it and you understand the way it plays out. Where it tires out, we get exhaustion here, then we move down, we test this low, exhaustion here, divergence here, and then on this here, we're, we're on a weekly chart. I'd be going down to a daily chart and looking for signs of a reversal. Now, if this is a five-minute chart, I'm going to be down to a one-minute chart looking for signs of a reversal on this time frame. I'll be looking for a one, two, three on this time frame right there. All right. So um, let me see. So that is uh, my info. But let me do this. I want to bring up. So I've got live charts here right now. Way and this is a daily chart, hourly chart, ten minute, and two minute. All right. Let me just give you a couple examples. I'll show you one from today where I think this can be advantageous. All right. Here we've got Schwab, and if we notice what's taking place on the hourly, we got a pretty strong move yesterday, and then it pulled back. And, and it found support right at the 18, which was declining, and now it's turning up, okay? Now, if you look at what happened to the MACD, MACD was getting back above the zero line, and it was pinching in towards the signal line at the same time. So I really like that look, all right? And then if we go and we look at what took place on the lower time frame, so this is the this pullback here is this pullback here. Now, we had this monster red bar. I do, a, in fact, I did a, a, a lesson on big green bars and big red bars on uh, Stock Talk a couple of weeks ago. You might want to go back and look at that lesson. It's like 10 minutes, maybe eight to 10 minutes at the beginning of, uh, of the video. But these big red bars can be really important. No, I do not include the overnight data in my uh, charts. Now, if I'm trading in pre-market, if I like I used to trade the E-mini, obviously I'm going to do that up until the open. And then I sort of switch it because I want to look at what the majority 
of guys are looking at. All right. That's why I flip over during the day, you know, overnight, obviously you include everything, but then at nine 30 for me, I, so I know how to trade gaps and everything. So you do need to know how to do that. Although most of the signals that I use on a 10 minute or a two, 10 minute or a five minute, they tend to show up more like 10 to 11, as opposed to right at the open. All right. Um, so that's just something you want to be aware of. But the point I was going to make here is look at this monster red bar right at the end of a decline. So we've done an ABC to the downside and then we get this big red bar. Well, that's kind of like ending action back to support. We should be looking for potential reversal and look at this, no ADX strength. So we've made a pretty big drop off the peak and we get this huge red bar, but you still can't get the ADX above 25. All right, we were on the lookout for reversal. Well, we're coming into trend support. You see how we can use these two together? And then you'd go down to the small time frame, you know, uh, on a uh, two minute chart to uh, to look for entry signals off of that support. You might wait for the midpoint of this big red bar to be taken out and then go down to the uh, two minute chart to look for the signal. You can see where the MACD crosses over the uh, signal line there. Um, so that that's kind of one way I think you could look at it. Another one would be something like this, where we get a gap down this morning. All right, let's just uh, zero in on this a sec. So we get this massive gap down and then we rally up. Now this is on the 10 minute, all right? And look at this nice, beautiful higher lows. You see how the MACD is pinching in towards the signal line while we're making higher lows. Look at how the ADX is being, is is the strength is focused on the sellers. The red line is in control here. Red's above, it turned up here, stayed above through a pullback, which is even more important. And it continues to stay above throughout the pullbacks. Green is staying below 25. Well, I know I can look to play a reversal. I, I, this rally up, I can go down to the smaller time frame. Let's do that. So if we go and we look at the... Um, two minute chart, we get a rally up to, so this rally at the beginning of the day is that three to four bar rally I was showing on the 10 minute chart. Look at what happened to MACD. Look at how the ADX died off based on the buyers. You see how the strength of the sellers and then you made a pretty, what looked like a pretty substantial rally. Green DI moved up, but this line is still dropping. So I'm looking for a reversal here and you could draw in your trend line and uh, if I can draw it in. You can look for your trend line. You get a couple of nice red bars and play for a reverse. Or you can play a reversal coming back down through the two moving averages. Or you can play the first pinch play after that. So there's a lot of options in terms of entries. I offer, there in my course, I go through about three or four different entry strategies. Um, and depends on how strong the ADX and the MACD are. All right. That's going to have an influence on the trigger. It's nice to be able to use the same trigger every time, but what I have found is that it won't, it won't, it really doesn't give you an optimum strategy to play the same one every single time. It really depends on how strong the rally is based on these two indicators. And then you adapt uh, based on the, the rally and the reversal. So uh, that's a couple of examples. I'm at two, I've got, uh, uh, the big bar video. If you go to YouTube and you type in big green bar, Joe Rabel, you you'll, it'll pop up or you could do stock talk, big green bar. Um, and, uh, and, and you'll find it, it it'll pop up there. It, it, it's, it was about two weeks ago on my, uh, on my, uh, stock talk show. All right. Uh, do we have any other questions? Any other questions about I went through, I mean, I went through this at hyperspeed. This is not, look, it took me years of adapting this stuff to really get it down. And certainly it took me a long time before I could see it in real time like this at a uh, super fast paced two minute chart. Um, stock screener. I mean, uh, what I would tell you to do is go look for, um, 18. So if I'm like, you could do it on a 10 minute or two minute or something like that and say 18 below the 40 and MACD is below the signal line. All right. And then if you wanted to take it even further, you could look for two higher lows in price. So that would give you a short, and that would be the higher time frame. All right. So 18 below the 40, both lines declining. And then, you know, a small rally against the trend. Yeah, 
uh, in terms of, uh, you know what? It's so funny because what I tell guys is, look, um, my YouTube channel, my stock chalk lessons, my book, my book starts out a little bit on the basic side, but but pretty much, I guess I do a little bit of that in my courses, but the reality is, is that most of what I'm doing is a masterclass. This is, I'm sort of assuming you already have a good feel for MACD, ADX, you've used them for a little while. Most people, you know, I spend more time on ADX because most people are less familiar with that. But I'm not, I, I need to kind of hook up with someone who can teach the the real basics of this stuff. So I don't have an answer to that, unfortunately. Um, I think, you know, it's a progression uh, of learning. I, a lot of it is understanding some of the concepts I'm giving you and then spending a lot of screen time. Even for the guys that trade monthly, weekly, or weekly, daily that I coach, I teach them to go trade in her day, even on a simulator, because this stuff is coming at you fast and furious. And you will, that's what I did. I did. It's funny. I probably did back in the, uh, right around 2000, late nineties, I probably did 5,000 simulated trades in the E-mini using micro, micro timeframes and even tick charts, and then flipped over to real-time trades, did like five 5,000 real-time trades with just one contract. And all I can tell you is, I know people are like, oh yeah, if you're not trading real money, it's, you're, you know, it, to me, it's all about screen time and recognizing all the nuances. That took me to an entire new level. That period, right around 99 to 2000, 2001, it was, it was I, I moved ahead light years because of all the trades I was putting on and it made a massive difference in what I was doing. So that's my big suggestion to you is learn some of these concepts that I'm showing you and then spend an inordinate amount of time in front of the screen. And uh, it is best to put trades on where you think that you think now you could just do it on a really small size on a stock and you have real money at work. But, I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of going and trying stuff like this if you don't really know it, not with real money. So uh, like, like regular size. So I would start small in some way, shape or form. Yeah, the pinch play is great. One thing I would tell you, I talk about this in the book is that I, I have a two time frame pinch play that I think is even more valuable. And that's where the two time frames line up. They're both giving pinch plays. And it's essentially where we've got a, a, a stage two, in this case, it would be a stage two decline confirmed and then a stage two signal on the small time frame. So 10 minute, two minute, both giving sort of a confirmed downtrend. So um, it can it can really be useful um, as a entry tool. A lot of the guys that I that I do that are my subscribers are, are uh, you like to use that as an entry tool, especially on the higher time frame, because what ends up happening is you, if you get a pinch play on this time frame, a lot of times you're going to get a zero line reversal on the next time frame. So that's actually what happened here. We got a pinch play here. And then on the lower time frame, you should be looking for a zero line reversal. Great, great combination. Massive. Uh, and, and if we have low ADX in place, it's even better. So that's really the combination I really like to look for, especially um, if if I'm looking at a bigger picture play to the upside and I'm looking at something that could be a longer term play for me, I love that, you know, longer term pinch um, and then zero line reversal gets me in at a, at a pretty good price. Got a few more minutes if there's any other questions. Or if we want to look at a live chart of anything you're you're looking at right now to see if we've got any signals developing. Is there any stocks you guys want to look at right now in real time? Okay, so the one thing I did not show in uh, in this, well, I did allude to it, but I haven't shown any examples, is the low ADX breakout that took place on the uh, on the daily chart here. It actually even showed up on a weekly. Look at the big green bar kicking things off after this long consolidation and low ADX condition in place. And MACD crossing the zero line right around the same. That was the kickoff move, right? And then we could look at pullbacks. Now, I am on a daily chart. Let's just see. I'd have to go down and try to change my time frames here uh, because this is uh, 
So it's it's not ideal to use a futures chart with my setup right now. X A U. Oops. It's probably. I'm on thinkorswim, so I'm actually not sure how to pull that up. Sure, Charles, no problem. Um, any other uh, any other symbols? Potentially? Okay, forward slash GC, I'll go back to that. Now, here, the problem is, so this actually brings up a really good point. If we're going to 24 hours trading, yeah, if we look at the GLD, it's a little bit easier, but let me make this point. So I want to use a one to five, one to six, and hourly is a one to six and a half. It's usually about as far as I want to go. So I'm looking at a one to five ratio, meaning this is the small time frame. So a one and one minute, five minute work really well. Um, a, a 10 minute and a 60 minute work really well together. Okay. Um, the daily hourly is kind of pushing the edge, but you know, it's, it's okay. It still works fine. Um, I don't really like a one to four ratio or a one to three for my approach because I'm not going to get enough signals, uh, that, that opposing trend signal. So just be aware of that. If you're looking at a 24 hour, you're going to need to adjust your thinking. So if we look at the GLD, just to make it a le little easier, um, we actually just formed all right, let me just show you. Uh, if I can... oh. So this just made a higher low here, but the MACD made a lower low. I call this, this is one of my patterns, called reverse divergence, reverse divergence, okay? And what I'm looking at is that this is actually higher low. This is a lower, versus a standard divergence where you're looking at this making a lower low and MACD making a higher low. We're doing the opposite. All right. Now, what I like about reverse divergence is it happens in the direction of the, whoops, it happens in the direction of the trend. Okay. Now, when we get that pullback, we can now look for our entry on the one, two, three here. We make a move to the upside and here's our entry here to get in that pattern. Actually, no, that would have been further back an even better signal. Uh, that would have been, no, that was it. So yeah, I would have let this break out and then look to buy the first pullback here where MACD is pinching in here. You see that? So this was a reverse divergence signal and this was a pinch signal, all right? And so in this case, because we don't really have ADX confirming, I would take this as a small trade as a move back up to this prior peak. That's how I would be looking at this. But you could get in off of this bar here as a pinch play signal develops and play it for a move up into resistance. So that's kind of how I would look at that, just you know, off the cuff. Now, if I'm going through and looking at a bunch of examples, this might not meet the criteria I'm looking for, but I wanted to give you an example in real time of how something could play out if you're really looking for an entry, or if you only trade a couple uh, different things. Um, okay, I think, let's just do this. I think Bitcoin's gonna be the same problem. Um, if you notice, I, I don't get it, it replaces the way thinkorswim does it. Um, I mean, we can do this off of, uh, so this is a, uh, hourly and a 10 minute. Look at the way we started losing MACD strength, not ADX strength, but MACD strength on the way down. So we're getting divergence to show up here. And then uh, we make a move to the upside. I mean, this is something you could be looking for as a potential little trade, but I would warn you that you have to be pretty nimble, but this is pretty strong momentum to the downside still on the hourly based on the ADX, okay? So we can use the ADX, even if the ADX isn't giving us a signal, we can look at the condition of the ADX to help us determine how big of a play, if we're playing counter to it, how big of a play do we want to do? One of the things I would tell you is that you kind of want to be playing these kind of patterns this, this directional move, go back and show you. So there's your opposing trend pattern. We make a move opposite direction. That's what this is. But the MACD was really strong. But notice where MACD crosses down below the zero line. That's right where this is getting ready to get going again. All right. So that's how we would use those two together. We get a rally to the upside. We get the rally to the upside here. But we have a lot of strength in ADX telling us look for continuation. 
And then on this time frame, we show a lot of strength, but then when it comes back down through this zero line here, we, we should be looking for some kind of an entry uh, to play it. So that's kind of the combination I think uh, that I would be looking for. I mean, right now, I think I'd be looking at Bitcoin as more like a reversion trade, a reversion to the mean. And it could have a potential rally back up to this next resistance area, um, you know, which here up in this range up here on this time frame. So uh, I think that's how I would be looking at that right now. Yeah, hidden divergence, reverse divergence. Exactly. Same thing. Continuation pattern. It's a great one to be on the look. It, it takes a little time to get used to it. But once you start to recognize it, it's a huge advantage.